our stocks to watch episode features companies that we see on the Jamaica Stock Exchange that we think are either going to be showing movement in terms of price or they may be something interesting about the company that we're expecting to see in the next usually one to three months, right? This is an episode where we have guests that will join us in terms of analysts from the space to share their opinions, share what they're seeing from the market. And we just have a lively discussion about what we think will happen if, if one person mentions a company, maybe we'll say we agree or maybe we don't, and then we discuss why. What we're going to do new this time that we've never done before is we actually will have Dino Hines, our special guest from MFS Capital Partners. He's going to be sharing his perspective in terms of what he's seeing in the, in the economy and how that may impact us as, as investors. And then we'll talk a little bit about MFS, just a couple of questions um, that persons would have submitted beforehand. But for the Stocks Watch episode, it's the same one that you, that, that you know and love. Um, we've just tried to make the format a little bit more impactful for those who are watching. And so we, we really hope you enjoy this episode. Let's get started. Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn, Grow, Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn, Grow, Invest. All right, welcome back. Let us pray that we're able to meet in this way. Lord, we pray for your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, before I go forward, I have to mention this class that we have coming up on November 4th. It's Investing in Mutual Funds in partnership with GK Mutual Funds. So be sure to register for this class. It's coming up in just about a month. So please uh, be sure to check that out. Also have to say, before we get into this episode, that anything that we discuss here, any information that we share is for the discussion, education, entertainment, and illustrative purposes only, and should not be considered as professional financial advice, solicitation, or recommendation to buy or sell any securities, right? Um, we're here just to share what we see from the market. We're not telling you to buy or sell anything in your portfolio, all right? So you'd have seen the, the title for this, this episode. Um, so we are going to talk about Trans Jamaica. That, that is definitely one of the companies that we'll speak about, but we'll go into our other picks as well, and just as we normally do. All right. So I have Andre Thompson, who's going to be joining us. Andre, thank welcome. You. All right. Thank you, Jeremy. Good evening, everyone. All right. So um, for those who don't know you, Andre, just a quick introduction as to who you are. All right, so I'm Andre Thompson, and you know I work in the asset management and trading unit at GK Capital, and that's a pretty much brief summary of who I am. I'm hoping that you know, <laughs> uh, learn, grow, investors and, and watchers would remember me or recall me from earlier videos, and you know, pretty much know <laughs> um, my my who I am and so forth. So, but in a nutshell, you know, that's that's me, um, local um, investor as well yeah all right so we both um we both have the first stock in common here so i thought i'd since since it's a title stock for this episode we'll just get right into it so our first pick our first pick in common is trans jamaica so i'll let you go first uh why is this on your watch list so pretty much trans i mean you know if you're looking at the performance of trans over you know, year to date to September 2023, the stock is essentially up 100. percent You know, one would ask, you know, what's the driver for the, for this um, you know, stellar performance in terms of the stock price? And I think that would pretty much be attributable to the recent acquisition of um, you know, their their, their sub um subsidiary Jamaican infrastructure operators. Um, I believe last year, you know, they announced their intention to to proceed with the acquisition. They did it; it was executed and. 
essentially because of that, you know, you're kind of seeing a, a reduction in terms of um, certain <clears throat> certain operating expenses. Um, when you look at the quarter ended June 2023, operating expenses, you know, was 5.4 million US compared to 9.5 for the same period in um, in October, in June of, of last year, June 2023. So that's one of the prime one of the contributors to um that net profit outturn of six million us for the june quarter and that would compare to 1.3 million us dollars back in june 2023 so you know profit has essentially catapulted and i mean if you look at the the, the audited 12 months figures for december 2022 they had a net loss of 7.1 million but the thing is if, if you look at the profit and loss statement you see that the real reason for that net loss would have been the settlement loss on the acquisition of gio which was around 13.9 million if you strip that out it would have actually been a profit of 6 million for the entire year last year so what you have now for june 2023 they essentially produced one year's normalized net profit in a single quarter so that has pretty much reflected in the stock price it's also reflected in the dividend um the dividend per share has essentially doubled and you know despite the movement in in the stock price it's still giving an attractive dividend yield or a relatively attractive dividend yield of around i believe it's 6.7 percent they are both um you know this would bode well the dividend investors you know especially those that are um banking or hoping on um you know some some reduction in interest rates you know maybe next year or there about uh essentially the idea is that you know cash you know cash might be redirected as fixed income offerings become um less attractive and then you know the taxation rate on dividends is 15 percent as opposed to um fixed income which is around 25. so that further lends support to upward capital appreciation and i mean you know in addition to the lower operating expenses in our revenue has also grown it was 18.2 million for the quarter and then it was 15.4 for the same period last year so essentially you know expenses are, are being reduced revenues are growing and as such more is flowing down to the bottom line um and then you know i guess one of the things that i like about transto i mean you know the dividend yield for sure strong cash generating capacity evidence through 19 million in, in in cash flow from operations but the outlook for it is also relatively favorable um you know we have the recently opened uh mapen to williams field lake on the highway and um you know trans pretty much as a right of first refusal so is the expectation or the anticipation that should they to, uh, accept the operation at that lake that could mean additional revenues for trans jamaica so in addition to our fair financial performance it has a stable outlook um you know it's a very liquid stocks it, it's it's um heavily traded you know accounts for the bulk of volumes and, and you know good most days and so forth so in a nutshell that's one of the reasons why i'd, I'd say trans is one of my stocks to watch yeah a, a lot a lot there i'd probably just add a couple of things to that right um so I was watching the annual general meeting earlier. I definitely should check that out. It's on their their YouTube channel. So in addition to everything Andre says, which I agree, I noticed that the CEO mentioned um, the impact of the acquisition, right? That they had last year that, that Andre alluded to. Uh, there is a 12 million US estimated cost saving each year. Because what they said was that they saw where this entity GIO was accounting for about 83% of their operating expenses, right? So they saw to cut that down, they were able to reduce that significantly by just owning it, right? A couple of other things that they mentioned in terms of them seeing opportunities to be more efficient. Um, there, there are things that they are doing in terms of investing in marketing, trying to get more persons, for example, to use the tags on their cars instead, because they mentioned something that says the cost per transaction when when persons use a tag versus using cash of course you know the issues with jamaica being a society that likes to use cash that's actually an interesting thing to to hear about um 
I saw this in the interview with 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 with, with Kalila and the CEO of Beryllium, right? In terms of you know we're headed in the direction where we want to have more cash as a as a country for some reason, right? And of course that's going to impact the toll. But what they're trying to do is have um, persons use the tags more. It would be more efficient for them in terms of cost per per transaction. And also, of course, the, the new leg of the highway that Andre mentioned as well. Um, you know, those are things that all, you know, lend itself to the stock being favorable. Everybody knows that I'm a dividend investor. So um, the dividend is also very, very good to see. Um, I would have sent that out on our newsletter today. Um, and what was interesting is that they, they actually exceeded their projection for the dividend, right? Um, there's a forecast that they showed for the the annual general meeting where they had their forecast and they had what what has happened right so they've already been able to exceed what they've forecasted for the last three years right what that means I think is that as as investors you have an opportunity to potentially get a higher dividend that is than is being projected now it's not something to that is is going to be guaranteed but if you look at um where they landed in terms of that dividend yield the the range was i think 5.3 to 8.7 based on ipo price but the dividend that they that they just announced would have been 13 percent above ipo price right so if, if they're even able to stay within the range of their projections i think that still bodes well for it and uh, yeah i don't know if we need to say anything much about about trans jamaica after that um they they the liquidity issue andre i wanted to ask you about because uh we, we try to be balanced here right so there 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 are positives but what what's the negative that you potentially see in terms of that same liquidity issue because some persons are concerned based on how how liquid the stock is that you know in terms of if if let's say a large shareholder decides to sell you know what what could that mean for the price so i mean given i mean if, if you know if, if from a technical standpoint if you're to assess the queue um you know some stocks especially now when the the sentiment or equity sentiment isn't as as best as it used to be or as in, in terms of what it was recently um I think it's different for trans jamaica meaning and if you assess the queues there is a large number of bids large number of offers the shares are actively trading hands so i think that actually um you know would, would facilitate or allow investors like great great price discovery in terms of multiple buyers multiple sellers and all of that and then you know it's also <clears throat> not only is it on the j dollar side but it's also across the stocks i mean what you're seeing on the j dollar side tells only a part of the story there's also the us dollar side um you know for those who hold the stock in j dollar or seeking to, to like in terms of trading the currency that's an avenue that um some traders would, would assess and would consider so i think um you know given that the, the, the queue is is, is um, a bit healthy it's it's vibrant a lot of buyers a lot of sellers i think that's that's definitely a plus so it's more readily tradable as opposed to illiquid stocks where you know sometimes warrant um you know large sell downs or, or things like that because they're so illiquid not much buyers on, on the bid side and so forth which you know is sometimes a turn off to um in investors especially when they're looking to deploy a certain or a relatively large amount of capital in in terms of an equity investment okay okay all right um cool so what's what's your what's your next pick so my next pick i'd probably go with uh jamaica broilers uh it's a it's a stock that i've been watching you know for the for the longest while you, met, you mentioned that a couple of times yeah. over the last year and a half yep. yeah you know i mean you know we we need for the long haul so um you know the the, the price you know it, it's i believe it's now at the 33 region you know it would have probably been at the high of around 37. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> So essentially on the graph that you're showing there it probably shows a, a little downward trend i think that's over the three-month period but essentially the, the, the earnings tells a different story 
where the earnings yeah. has essentially been on an upward trajectory. I believe it's since recently where they've actually um, broken the mark where they're able, where they've started to consistently generate, you know, a, a billion in um, in, in in net profit um, on a quarterly basis. Um, <clears throat> so looking at the looking at the earnings for the most recent quarter being uh, the quarter ended July. 2023 you know revenues are, they reported a modest growth in revenue 22.9 in july 2022 compared to 23.4 for july 2023 um if you're looking at profit now um in terms of the net profit the profit would have amounted to 1.2 billion compared to approximately 1.1 so it's 1 billion uh 68 million for the same yeah. period back in in july 2022 and, you know, if you look at the net profit that's actually, actually attributable to the stockholders of the company, it's, you know, it's the 1.2 billion compared to 1.1, you know, which I believe would be associated with, with the, at the time would have been associated with the heating operations. So, they, 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 you know, financially, they're, they're performing well. Um, we all know what the product is. It's chicken, it's eggs, um, you know, consumer staple products, um, things that, you know, you know, um, essentially inelastic, meaning, you know, there, there's any price change will likely not result in, in any um, material change in demand. During when, you know, there were supply chain issues, you know, they were impacted by um, a, a, the narrowing or a reduction in terms of the margins. But despite that, they, were, they still were generating higher profits against the backdrop of higher revenues. And now when, you know, essentially the you know, supply chain disruptions have somewhat eased. We've seen where the margin has actually started to, to you know, strengthen and, and, you know, return back to in line with the historic, historic mean. <clears throat> um, so for July, for July, for, for 2020, or for 2021, the margin was 25.7 and then, you know, it, it contracted to 23.8 for 2022, you know, which was essentially the year when, you know, supply chains uh, disruptions would have peaked. And, you know, up to 2023, the margin, the gross profit margin has since, you know, um, expanded to 25.6%. Likewise, the gross profit margin of around 4.7% compares to 4.1% back in 2021. So, I mean, if you're taking a deeper dive now, the company's operation, they've exited Haiti. For the longest while, Haiti was a loss maker for the company's overall operation. So, you know that that has since um, been been excluded or no longer uh, uh, um, a drawdown for them, so to speak. But in terms of the company's um, U.S. operations, I think that's essentially the, the segment that's to be commended. You know, the the profit for the the most recent quarter was one point, roughly one point two million U.S. in terms of the segment result. And that would compare to 814 million. So as you can see, it's essentially, I believe, almost 50% increasing in terms of the segment result or in terms of the profit from that result, from that segment. Um, I believe revenues would have declined marginally for that quarter. And essentially, the, the company um, attributed that to, you know, a reduction or a stabilization of, of I believe, its egg prices. <clears throat> Um, yeah, stay falling, falling prices in terms of the companies in most of the company's product lines. But however, because of higher poultry volumes, um, they were essentially able to in, remain profitable or increase their profitability. And then when you're looking at the price multiple of, of um, you know, JBG against, you know, a market average PE of about uh, main market, which would be 14.9 times. Jamaica Boilers PE is actually coming in at, I believe it's eight times, 8.7 times. So as you can see, it's a steep discount compared to the to the broader to the broader main market. So that's one of the reasons you know I'm watching JBG. Um, you know, it's a dividend paying stock, albeit you know I guess relatively low compared to prevailing interest rates compared to a transjam. But nonetheless, it's a strong company fundamentally speaking. Um, attractive multiple 
properly run, continues to do well. So that's my second stop that I'm watching. Um, I do like Jamaica Broilers as well. I have for a while. I think for me, I mean, the dividend was never an issue, I think. I mean, because as you know, the yield comes down to the price that you paid for the stock. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if you can, but it's one of those stocks, of course, depending on when you started investing, you know, $30 per share. Because this is what I say to people, right? If, if you're investing for dividends, then it, it has to be about volume for you, right? Because the more volume you have, the more the more cash you get back in terms of dividends, yeah. right? Because um, 42 cents is not bad, but if you have to pay $30 per share to get 40 cents, again, it's going to make Trans Jamaica look, you know, ridiculously better in terms of um, a yield there. But um, I do think with them cutting the operations in Haiti and, I mean, they're them being able to grow. And I've, I've always seen it as a company that has, a, has an opportunity to grow because of the product itself, right? You could, you could potentially sell that in every market in the world. So it's it's really just now to to get those those partnerships and the way that they've been growing the business um, seems interesting. So I think the year that they are they are positioned for is actually a good one. Whether or not the market will will respond is is not up to them. But um, I, I see your pick, so I I leave it I leave it at that. I'll yeah, that. yeah. I mean, as I said, ju just just to add to that. Um, yeah, as I said, like it, you know, in terms of the, the, the performance of the, the poultry division in the US. And I mean, you know, look using the, the trend in the stock price, you know, as any indication of, of the, the, the market sentiment towards the stock. Um I'm seeing where essentially <clears throat> on a on a year to date basis, it's one of the few stocks, the few <laughs> JC listed stocks that would probably be up on a on a year to date basis. I mean four percent, but still up, still up. I it's get you. Still, I guess. still up, and then I believe that the, the yeah. figure will be actually even greater over over the last twelve months. Yeah, yeah, let me let me check that. Use Perfect. ticker to check that. Probably in the region of about fourteen percent, and uh, over the last year. Um, my my rough estimates would show. Uh, yeah, dividend yield of around two point three percent. And I mean, yeah, well, it, it's it's up it's up thirteen percent in the last year, in the last yeah. twelve months. That's not bad. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, against the backdrop of you know the broader index have been been consistently declining, and especially you know most stocks declining. I think their yeah. performance shows um, you know the, the the sentiment towards the stock, and, and you know how the, the, the factoring in the outlook as well as you know just how they've been performing so far. Um, yeah. yeah, I see you. And I mean, I, I know that this is one of them that um, I think I watched the interview that they did uh, for the Mayberry Investor Forum where they were interviewing um, JBG. So that's that's also an interesting one. They got into, you know, the, some of the the details about the product itself, all of that stuff um, was a was a good watch for me. I, I thought long and hard about the second one because in general what i did the last couple of months um so when we did the last stocks to watch i think you were here i had um a portfolio of about 10 to 12 companies and actually brought that way down right because mm -hmm. what i've been seeing and what you're probably seeing as well from your side even if if there's some form of run-up it's not sustained anymore yeah definitely, so it, yeah, definitely observing that it's all short it's, it's like maybe a week or two and then that's it right even if the company has been performing consistently well so what that said to me is that yeah go ahead oh so i'm saying i think i guess my my view in terms of that would suggest you know there's just a lot of uh profit taking and i think it could be related to just the sentiment towards equities so i mean you know you have investors in the shadows they're not even in the queue they're watching they're looking some might be looking for opportunities where they can you know just realize the gains and reduce the risk that's just associated with equities as an asset class and a whole 
and um and i mean that's just the, so you have you know you probably have retail investors that have cash needs so where possibly they can they've probably been in the red with another stock they realize where they could get gains by realizing the, the, the those gains to offset the stock and you know generate some cash that they that they could redeploy elsewhere and then you also have the more savvy investors or the, the larger institutional investors that pretty much have the focus on fixed income so essentially they are assessing and you know doing their cost benefit analysis to see you know what if, if i were to exit my equity exp exposure and redirect towards fixed income that's generating you know attractive or relatively attractive interest rates and is essentially risk-free i believe that that thinking essentially prompts them to take profit so essentially i think what i'm seeing is that there's a lot there's essentially a lot of profit taking while um investors yeah. you know continue to monitor economic conditions interest rates inflation and, and, and all the works yeah man and I, I mean it, it just makes sense i think now to focus on cash flow um but yeah we can talk about that another time for me the second pick for me is fontana a company that we've spoken about before um i remember when julian gave it was julian actually julian um who made me really look at this one because of when he mentioned the, the the things that he saw as as opportunities within the context of our landscape right so for me i i see i mean we know about the the location that's pending opening we see where just more and more persons i think are I first thought when when they did the IPO that the brick and and mortar model would not work <laughs> because I'm like you're you're actually moving backwards. But yeah. um, you know, just seeing opportunities there that they've they've been able to leverage the the location up by Waterloo doing well. Um, this new location in Portmore that's expected was was actually expected for September, I believe. Um, but um, I've seen pictures of of it, but nothing officially announced as yet. I figure that that may be any day now. I tried to get an interview with the CEO. I haven't been able to get that one just yet. But um, that's one that I'm, I'm definitely looking at. Um, we saw the price actually trend upwards a little bit, and then it kind of went back down to between the 10 to 11 range. It's been there for a while. Uh, but I think if they're able to complete that location it does well i think they're if they're able to leverage um technology i think i think there's a great um e-commerce opportunity for them and it it is a place where when persons you know think about certain items they think fontana first um so it's definitely have it definitely has brand loyalty i think and their their customers who might have there as a preference. I like the model that they seek to try to make the different conveniences in one place. So there's a Starbucks there, there's a pharmacy there. They have a really nice uh, selection for some things. And um, so, yeah, I think they've been able to build that out a little bit. And so, so I'm just waiting to see how, how the market responds to that, um, that increased performance that I'm expecting after the the location is is completed and we're able to see what that looks like um so yeah that's that's me um any any thoughts on that one yes i think you know fontana essentially i think they sell a, a good retail experience so um i think the last time we were discussing fontana i think we made mention that you know you know whenever you have to go to fontana is you, you know you're looking forward to it you made mention of the starbucks especially the, the flagship location you, you have the starbucks I believe you have Wendy's, um, and yeah, it's just a nice. It, it's a good. Uh, the, the aesthetics of it, all of the product offerings, not just pharmaceuticals, but also um, you know other retail items, things like that. So it's. I mean, I believe most people look forward when they have to go to Fontana for whatever reason. Um, they, they look forward. To I think. It. I think that the women look forward to it. I'm not sure the men look forward to it. <laughs> but. Um, yeah. And then I think then you know they still have more tools in the arsenal that in, in the arsenal that they can use to continue to um continue along their growth path. So I mean yeah. expansion has been one that they've um you know their their go to um in terms of um in terms of the, the market penetration and all of that. Um and I think I, I think they have a really 
I think they have a real e-commerce opportunity because I don't know yeah. the amount that that contributes to the business, but for their wide selection, sometimes, and I know persons may think that the best thing to do is have persons come into the store and may buy things that they didn't plan to buy. But to me, they, I mean, and we've seen it with, with, with Amazon, if persons have the ability to browse, add something to a cart, it may be a similar effect. So I think that they have an opportunity there. Um, they've mentioned Im improvements or additions in terms of technology in previous reports, but I'm not sure how much their e-commerce really adds to their, their top line at this point. Yes, I believe that their ability to leverage technology going forward to further enhance the customer experience and I know and, and in terms of the, the um, inventory management and um, enterprise management and all the works, they're, they're in that space. They made mention of it, but in terms of enhancing the customer experience, I still think that's an area for growth. So as such, there's still that potential for them. And as I said, even though they've been expanding, um, I still even think there's more room for expansion, um, even in Jamaica. And then I think the last time we spoke about it, they could even consider regional opportunities where they could, could expand. I think so. I, I think they should. And that, mm -hmm. that's definitely one of the questions I'd ask the CEO, have they really, you know, considered that? Because I, I think it's a strong brand that could work in the Caribbean as well. Yeah, and it, I mean, it's our local Walmart, um, you know, and I guess, well, a mixture of Walmart and Walgreens, you know, essentially, it would be in the mixture of the pharmaceutical and in, in terms of retail. And in terms of this space, I mean, for sure, they're the market leader. I, I mean, to the best or off the top of my memory, I can't really think of anybody that, you know, would be remote close in terms of the, the brand that yes. is fantastic. So there's a lot of brand loyalty, a lot of brand retention. So I think they could leverage that and, you know, pretty much consider, um, you know, further expansion regionally. Yeah, agreed. All right. What's your third? All right. So my, I've, my first two picks were main market stocks. I guess my, my third pick will be a junior market stock and it's recently listed. Um, I'm pretty much still watching to see how they will continue, how they will perform going forward, given the recent capital raise and that company is actually Image Plus consultant. You know, they're in the business of um, imaging modalities and, and, and all the works. Uh, they have operations in Kingston. They have um, a branch in, in White River, Ultrarius. Um <clears throat> So, yeah, they, 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 I think it's true that are relatively attractive multiple of 11 times. Uh, that if you compare that against um, the, the average for the junior market a segment of the services industry, um, it's eleven point five times compared to compared to seventeen point five times, which is a discount, and it's also a discount to the broader junior market being sixteen times, and a discount to the overall market at fifteen times. So the you know pretty much they they. In terms of the outlook, they made mention of um, you know the acquisition of a of a new location. They they, they hope to um, you know the, the, the Winchester Road location. They want to centralize the services and ultimately increase their efficiency. So that's pretty much on the outlook for them in terms of um, things that they have in the plans. Uh, they, you know they want to add more modalities in, in the form of uh, in, in in terms of mammography. They want as a modality they want to add mammography as a new uh, service offering um pretty much for the for the most recent quarter i believe there was a short there was a fall off in earnings and you know the manager would have attributed that to downtime in terms of the, the services which is um customary in, in 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 the industry so what's important yeah. is essentially you know how you manage that downtime so they've express their intention to you know explore um multiple vendor relationships so that will essentially you know any shortfall that one vendor would have in terms of parts that's needed for servicing the, the, the devices they can they have other relationships where they could other areas where they could request and you know um get the parts and reduce that overall downtime so um it's a, as i said it's a new listed company the, the capital was only recently raised they're still in the process of you know realizing the benefits of how it's it's deployed and all of that um i think what well what what surprised me you know, being a newly listed company you know they they actually declared a dividend 
shortly after listing you kind of want to be cautious of how you view that because you know it could be a bad management call however the company could just be profit um properly run to the point where management think it's it's the company is in a position to return value to shareholders in the form of a, um, of a dividend so um those are some of the things that I'm, I've, I've noticed that I'm, I'm, I'm watching where the stock is going. Interesting, interesting take on the dividend angle. So typically I say I don't think a junior market company should focus on a dividend. Mm -hmm. I think it may not, I think it may be premature, but um, I think that, I think the dividend is just something that based on a business model, they can continue to afford uh while being able to grow because i think this 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 new location is going to be their major investment for a while so meaning after after this one is done we'll probably see them try to reap the benefits of the location and, uh, and not necessarily going to any major expenditure otherwise i mean of course the ceo did mention that um acquisitions aren't off the table she did say that you know opportunities are if they come they won't turn them down but it depends of course on on, on the viability of it but mm -hmm. to me after they've invested in this this new location gotten it to a certain point then we should see um more efficiencies um maybe greater opportunities for different product lines to be rolled out etc um and there is focus on as you say you know building out the different modalities and yeah i think I, I do i do like the company as well typically i don't like to look at companies on stocks to watch that have been listed within the year but i mean technically mm -hmm. they they came to market last year you could say um or was it early this year i don't remember but um i do like i do like the company as well it's not my third pick but um i like it i like it as well Yes, I mean, just to take a quick glimpse at the balance sheet, total assets essentially 1.2 billion compared to, as at May, and that's compared to 500 million approximately um, May of last year. And, you know, essentially that would have been largely contributed by the increase in, in equity through the IPO, the IPO raise. So essentially what that capital raise has done now, the company is very capitalized with um you know essentially total assets being funded 75 percent by equity and you know the remainder being um being, being debt in terms of the long-term borrowings it's only 83 million um the current portion, it's essentially little debt so they have uh, well, if, needs, if needs be um i mean you know you want to be guided by the current interest rate environment but you know if needs yeah. be they are able to leverage um, they increase the leverage position to get additional capital to pursue any other expansion opportunities or any anything item that management sees fit. Um, I guess one one thing that I'd want to monitor with the stock would be um, in terms of the the, the the bulk of the assets would be you know current assets, the more liquid, but most of the, the liquid assets would be uh, the trade receivables. So essentially when you look at the cash flow statement and your 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 you know your strip out in terms of the, the, the increase in receivables they actually generate they, they used 112 million in terms of the operating activities so i think in terms of the, the management report going forward um you know they said the, the focus review of receivables management is actually one of their priorities going forward so that's a space that i want to watch the, the stock listed at $2, um, it, it hasn't run away, you know, I guess what most people would be used to in terms of IPO, IPOs. So it, I guess a lot of, some investors probably would have, you know, short-term investors would have exited by now. Long-term investors, you know, probably would have locked in their position and so forth. But as it stands now, the price is at around, I believe it's $2.10. They're about, so that would be a year-to-day change or a, a return of 5% relative to the IPO price. So not much capital gains thus far. So um, I guess just to watch and see how it plays out as the data, you know, is incoming as they post the earnings, as they finalize the um, expansion of the, you know, the, the, the new location, the Winchester Road location. So yeah. that's my third pick. That's my third side that I'm watching.
Yeah, I think I think um, we should have an earnings call coming up with them soon. So we'll try and get a timeline as to where things are. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I like the company, as I said, but not my third. My third is actually Dolphin Cove, um, interestingly enough, um, a company that I kind of came up on my radar earlier this year. And I looked at their six months here. So this is their six months in terms of revenue. Notice, well, it's probably a little bit hard to see unless you turn the screen, but revenue would have increased 37% compared to the same period last year. Profit after taxation is actually up 50%. Um, so I think they're kind of positioned to have a good year, well, a much better year than they had last year. I think all signs are pointing to things continuing to grow in terms of, um, you know, tourism, et cetera. Um, I did, I did actually do a stock review. Yes. So when I did the stock review was, was when it, um, started to, when, when I started to give it like a closer look, right. Cause usually after I do a stock review, um, if, if there's something that interests me, then I'll continue to track for a little bit. Um, so Dolphin Cove is definitely one that is, is kind of sticking out for me. I've been looking at the. The trading as well, the number of shares that that um, are available, I think there are some opportunities there. I won't say anything um, in terms of what I'm expecting here, but um, the growth that, that's potentially there in terms of visitors to the country, tourism, I think, boding well for them. The growth that is there in, in terms of um, revenue and profits for the year, I think that will continue to be on the uptrend and um actually do uh, would love to see there was something that they mentioned in their report i think it's a previous one trying to remember um if they mentioned some what they mentioned as zero growth opportunity i don't i don't think it's in this report i think it's in the previous one but yeah dolphin cove is one that i'm watching now um so the three for me of course you know transforming as you mentioned Fontana and then Dolphin Cove. I, when you mentioned recently listed company, I thought you were going to mention One Great Studio, um, which which is definitely an interesting one. I want to hear your your thoughts on that one as we close out this this segment. All right. So before I move to the One Great Studio, mm -hmm. Dolphin Cove is actually a start that a start that I've liked for the longest while. Um, I think ah, it's, okay. Yeah, it, uh, it's a start that I've liked for the longest while. I think it's a great one of the one of the the, the, the stronger players in terms of um, co listed companies with exposure to tourism. Um, you know, a fair price multiple of one point seven times. Um, you know, a dividend yield of four point nine percent. And if you compare that to the rest of the market, it's it's definitely in the top. Uh, the, the the combined market, the average dividend yield would be about three point three seven. Their dividend yield is four point nine percent. Um, they've consistently been, you know, improving the earnings. Um, yeah, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, man, they're a dividend-paying company as well. Yeah, continue, continue. Yeah, they, they, they essentially declare at forty cents dividends um, twice per year. Or so yeah, um, it, it's good, and you know, they're earners of hard currency. Um, and one of one of the good things about them to their, you know, strong, their their um, a strong balance sheet, um, with with. Total assets are thirty four point six million US, and that's twenty nine point eight million that is funded by equity. So as you can see, the, the debt is very low, um, very very low. Most of it, you know, is essentially equity. Um, it's in terms of the cash or the, the liquidity of the stock. There, it's essentially a company that consistently generates cash from its operating activities. So I mean, you know, all of these is a plus, especially in, in, in the current um, in, environment. Um, one of the I things thought, I thought you meant liquidity in terms of number of shares. So that's what I'm actually going to next. It's mm. probably a double-edged sword, but the, the shares are very tightly held. The float is very small. Ninety-four percent of the shares is con essentially controlled by the shareholders. Mm -hmm. The number one shareholder essentially has eighty percent of the shares. So. Yeah. Because of that, the queue is essentially very dry. So 
But one thing yeah, that I'm not it's, it's 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 not the easiest stock to get shares for. Not, it's not so it's not the easiest to sell, but the upside is that you know sometimes it's not the easiest to get the shares for. So you know when Dolphin Cove is ready to run, it it, it will run because yeah. you know not much not much people hold the stock. So essentially, there's a large demand for the share, you know exceeding um exceeding the supply, the price will run. I, I think I remember it was like around. Yeah, man, it's 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 coming down to, from I think thirty dollars sometime. Yeah. In so I think the run I think the run started like December twenty twenty one. Memory serves me. Yeah, man, see it here. No, it actually the run yeah probably started around November twenty twenty one. It ah. went from ten dollars to thirty dollars, yeah. right? Yeah. Two hundred percent in like three months. Yeah. I remember right. that vividly, and I, I think as one of the contributing factors would be because the shares, the, 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 the limited supply of the shares, you know, yeah. whatever demand that was snapping up those shares was just grabbing it at the prices available. So you know, you yeah. find that the stock that went up to thirty, and then you know, it, it, you know, like as you know, eventually things normalized, so you know, the price came off, and you know, it's pretty much been stabilized at around sixteen, sixteen. Yeah, yeah it's been in the sixteen to seventeen for a while. Yep. Mm. All right, cool. Um, so those are our our six in total. Well, um, Andre and I shared Trans Jamaica. Um, so to 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 recap, Trans Jamaica, Jamaica Broilers, Fontana, Image Plus Consultants Limited, and Dolphin Co. So those are the stocks to watch for us. What we'll do actually is instead of having the episode each quarter. In, in the months in between that we have the episode i'll do an update for those same companies that we mentioned just like a progress on on the company since the point that we mentioned it so you can look out for that video we do have another segment now though so i want to thank andre for joining us any any final words before you go andre final word i'll, I'll try to sum it up in a sentence you asked about image plus i saw the most one great studio i saw the most recent earnings you know that it's doing very well um the acquisition of i think it's hvseo driving profitability earnings went very fast so i think it's one to watch i think you know recently listed definitely one to watch outside of that i'd say thanks for having me and good discussion and well, thanks again andre um i'm sure there'll be some some questions for you but i'm not sure if you're able to stick around to see if there are questions in the chat for you um you know otherwise just you know thanks again yeah, man, sure, no problem. Now look out for the questions, if any. All right. All right, everyone, welcome. Dino Hines. Dino, how are you doing? Good night, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man, thank you for accepting our invitation. So what, what did you think of the discussion you saw Andre and myself having? No, it um, was a good um, discussion. I really learned a lot. Um, <laughs> looking uh, at some of the stocks even some of the some of the companies you mentioned i haven't thought about them in a while and hearing you guys talking about them like even dolphin Cove, i was like oh yeah you know that's um a company we could take a look at so um so it was a really informative segment in terms of um providing information to the um investors all right cool thanks so i'll i'll explain to everyone you know why why i asked you to join so as a as a part of our new stocks to watch format i wanted to hear from you know a ceo of one of the companies that's on the market that we we talk about all the time hear your perspective on you know what's going on in terms of the market itself you know the economy movement of interest rates etc just kind of get your perspective as as a ceo of a company that's trying to you know um provide value to its shareholders on our local market so i'm going to give you the floor for you to kind of talk about what you're seeing and then when you come back we'll talk about just a little bit of um what's going on with mfs right now so i'll hand over to you and you know we'll speak soon all right so um as i said thanks thanks for having me again Jeremy. i think 
as most investors would know and the beast that is really driving a lot of decision right now in terms of the investing market not just the investing market but um most economies around the world um, actions being taken by either the government or central banks the issue that everyone is tackling is inflation and how it is that they are going to deal with inflation we have been seeing it locally we have been seeing it in most of the um larger economies the united states for example that has been their number one issue that they have been tackling for the past year and a half we all know how this problem came about covid 19 would have ravaged a lot of countries and the solution or the, the what was pursued in terms of combating the impact of um covid and the impact it was having on economies was to actually pump a lot of liquidity into the system to actually um, stimulate economic activity in these countries and that would have pushed um, inflation so the main tool that is currently being used to combat inflation is um, interest rates now a lot of what has been happening in the apart from the impact that inflation interest rate has on the wider um, economy in terms of um, our ability to borrow it also will definitely have an impact on our stock markets most stock markets would be impacted because as as an investor if your risk-free rate or the rate on fixed income in instruments at a certain level then investors will look at the fixed income investor investments and kind of stay away from the riskier um, and more volatile stock market so we have been seeing it a lot in our local stock market a lot of um investors have kind of moved out of stocks and would have moved into into um, the fixed income space earlier this year you had low risk instruments such as bank of jamaica cds 30 day cds which were at um trading at 10 percent so that will kind of give you an idea of where interest rate and attractive fixed income instruments are and why you would have the the kind of um, impact on the on the stock market and also jamaica the jamaican stock market has done phenomenally well over the past couple of years so we have been spoiled but the, the flip side is that when um <clears throat> we have done so well over over a six seven year period when there's a correction we'll also have one of the greatest correction <clears throat> so um the correction that we're seeing now in the stock market is as a result of the high interest rates that are out there, the fact that investors um, would view fixed income instrument as attractive and safer than stocks at the moment. So um, it's an it's a thing where investors who have been spoiled, especially retail investors, will have to start viewing this our stock market now in the lens of what true equity investments should be. Um, True equity, in, true, true equity investments are not normally short-term um, investments as we have become used to. We have become used to an environment where if the if an IPO comes out, for example, persons are almost guaranteed 30 to 50 percent, sometimes 100 percent within um, weeks, sometimes days. Um, we have to view equity investments through a different lens. It is a more long-term strategy. It's a strategy where we have to be careful in terms of picking up. Maybe one of the strategies that could be employed would be investing in some fixed income instruments and using your coupon payments to build a, a long-term stock portfolio. Um, what I can say is that investors will start seeing the benefit, I believe, within uh, a 12 to 18 month period. Because we don't expect that the 
the interest rate environment, the inflationary environment, will persist forever. We expect that um, over time, you'll start seeing interest rates coming off and you'll start seeing um, persons moving back into um, risky investments, such as stocks. In fact, um, the both Bank of Jamaica and the Federal Reserve, I think both paused in terms of the interest rate movements over the past couple of cycles. So we have already seen where they have moved from a situation where every rate cycle they were increasing interest rate to now an environment where they have paused and are observing. That is not to say that they might not return to increasing interest rates in the future if inflation continues to be very aggressive. But it's encouraging that they have paused. It's encouraging also that the inflation in terms of Jamaica has kind of come back. It's still not within the range that um, the Ministry of Finance or the central bank expects it to be. It's not in the range of the target for the central bank, but um, it's getting close to there. And we can expect that if we reach a stage where inflation is within like a 4% band, that you will start seeing interest rates coming off for um, for locally. And you start seeing a robust um, activity in our stock market again. I'll also speak a little bit in terms of the FX rate. I don't know how many persons online actually follows that, but a lot of the inflation that Jamaica sees is imported. Um, oil and a lot of what we consume um, is we import those. So the in inflation, the imported inflation will actually be worse if there's also movement in the exchange rate. And we have seen movements in the exchange rate over the past couple of years. Over the past year in particular, we have seen a situation where the dollar was ranging between 152 and 155. That range has now moved up, and we would think it's more, the range now appears to be more 154 to 156. However, we have also seen where the central bank has been very aggressive in terms of um, trying to combat movement in the in the um, interest in the exchange rate so the intervention or the level of intervention during the course of this year by the central bank they have been very aggressive they have been very consistent and constant so i think there we can be very happy that in terms of tackling and fighting um, inflation exchange rate trying to ensure that it doesn't get out of hand for the most vulnerable in society that the central bank has been working um, really hard on that. I mean, in terms of how I would, I mean, I already said how I would look at investing in this environment is, you know, a more rebalancing of your, of our portfolio, of your portfolio. The fixed income investments are really attractive no they're safer than stocks but of course stock is still the best long-term return and the best like that will generate wealth for investors in the long term so you have to look at the stock section of your portfolio as a long-term investment play and look at the fixed income section of your portfolio as the section that will now give you steady cash flow steady return and you know this cash flow can be looked at in terms of putting it into stocks. So, for example, today I looked at um, the German 2025 the US dollar global bond from the government of Jamaica. And congrats to the government. There we were just upgraded. So this instrument, the GOJ instruments, are just slightly below investment grade right now. Right. So um, trending in the right direction. And the German 2025 US dollar global bonds 
were giving you 5.5%, um, which is really good because this is a two-year instrument. It's US dollar, hard currency, 5.5% for a pretty attractive instrument that is now um, in, that is now going to mature in two years. And if you're looking at a timeline that you think that inflation will, will start to come down and you can go back into stock, this instrument will mature just around about that time or a little bit beyond the timeline that we're talking about. So that would be a really attractive instrument to go into instead of um, a US dollar savings account or a repo or whatever else is out there, getting 5.5% steady interest payment over a two year period on a highly rated debt instrument is, is pretty attractive. So those are some of the instruments that investors can look at. Um, in terms of stocks, I mean, the two that I would add to, to what you guys mentioned, I love uh, Scotia Group. I really, I, I, Scotia Group, financial sector stocks normally do really well in high interest rate environment. Um, of the ones that are there, you know, Scotia and NCB are the two large, largest financial institutions in Jamaica. No, a lot of persons will be staying away from NCB at this time because of the uncertainty and disruption. So I guess after the, that settles, you can look at that. But in terms of Scotia, um, strong dividend paying stock, which I know Jermaine loves, and also a stock that should do very well in this environment. Scotia Bank cost of funds is always low, a lot of cheap deposits. Um, their loan book, they have grown it over the past couple of years. And you know, financial institution, when interest rates are moving up, they will lag on the on the interest and moving up the interest on the deposit side, but they will immediately move up the interest on the loan side or on the debt side. So therefore, their their spread on their loan portfolio is will increase in this environment. Plus, you know, they have always had and still do have a really um, low non-performing portfolio in terms of their, their loan book. I also love Grace Kennedy because, you know, it's a conglomerate, it's diversified. I think they have really strong companies in the group. I think they have products that will do well even if the country goes into a recession. So um, those are my two, that's my contribution. Uh, if are there are any questions, about anything else to do with the economy or anything else that I can answer. Yeah. I'll try my best to, to answer. Okay. Thank you for that, Dino. I, I wasn't expecting a stock pick, but uh, I, I like that. Thanks for, for contributing there. Interestingly enough, um, I thought about what you said in terms of financial companies performing well in this environment. I guess at this stage, um we're waiting to see because really the market is not seeing it the same way right, right. um they're 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 not they're not responding in the same way ncb is interesting definitely i remember a few months ago when you visited our our monthly meeting you spoke about ncb um i i think that dividend announcement is very interesting i don't know if that is practical for for december 2023 but we will see um, but I mean, I do agree with Akeem that NCB is at a discount, but I think with all the things that are happening, then we have to give NCB some time, meaning, um, a lot of things are happening, but I do want to thank you for that portion, Dino. We do have, I promised that we'd ask you three questions, <laughs> re, yeah. re MFA, so let me kind of sift through and say the, the three ones that we can get through um so first thing that i'll ask you right is so would i've gotten some context from you in terms of um you know how you came to to list on on the stock exchange for the benefit of those who may not have understood that process and i hope you don't count this as a question yeah. i just have you to give us just a high level overview of how you came into into um listing on the stock exchange 
And then my first question after you explain that is where are you in terms of plans to grow the company, right? Because acquisitions would have been mentioned, etc. So my first question is what's the status on that? So over to you. So we we basically acquired a company that was already listed. Um, it was basically, uh, I, I mean, I don't know if I need to go into details in terms of the company and what it used to do because uh, it's the research is there. So we acquired a company that was already listed. Um, we have restructured the company. We have changed the, the strategy of the company. We have renamed and rebranded the company. And that's how we came to be um, listed. What was the second question? Second question is, where are you in terms? So you would have outlined your plans in terms of going into this year when we did our, our interview plans for acquisition, you know, com just, you know, executing your growth plans, etc. Where are you with that? As in, essentially what's happening with MFS right now as we're speaking. All right. So we have, in terms of where we are, we have completed the all the steps necessary to conclude our first acquisition. The, there, are things, there, there are items that were outside of our control, and that's why it took a little longer than we expected. Um, I think in terms of where we are, that one item that was outside of our control, we have had the dialogue and we are clear now as to what we need to do in terms of um, dealing with the, the item. And therefore, we should, you should see the, the announcement in terms of completion in short order. We, right. also, we also have, as we said then, um, other, other acquisitions that we have lined up that will, will move to immediately after the completion. And I think, I feel that my uh, investors, my shareholders, my stakeholders will be extremely happy when they see our new consolidated balance sheet uh, what it looks like we think it's a really strong attractive company that will be presented so it's just to get to that point to be able to present it to to the market all right great thank you for that i'm interested to learn more when you know the formal announcements are made and everything i'm sure right. we'll, we'll be able to get you for an interview then Another question based on the annual report that I was published recently on a, um, a few, I don't remember when exactly it was published, but the question is asked there and it was asked in our group as well. Um, from, from the audited financials, the company, it was listed by the auditor that it may be in right. doubt as a going concern. What are the immediate plans to have this rectified? Well... I think, well, to take a, a look at that statement, the statement would have to be made. The company we acquired um, really had no, I, I never made a profit from it was listed or, or created. Um, and therefore the company would have had accumulated, a lot of accumulated losses on the balance sheet. In fact, one, we found that also to be a selling point for us in terms of our strategy to do the acquisition to start with. Why? Because um, the company was already listed for over 10 years and therefore the junior market benefits would have run out, right? So when we looked at it and looked at the accumulated deficit, we, we thought that um, this is good in terms of us being able to offset future profits against the accumulated deficit and therefore um, it will be an attractive tax play for the company going forward now that we have returned to profitability as the um as the our financials will reflect this year because even without completing the, the the acquisition or putting the acquisition 
on our consolidated balance sheet, the company was profitable. The company um, was 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 a really positive year in terms of our activity. So, in terms of answering that, the consolidated the the financials with the accumulated losses and the deficit would have um, therefore shown a, a a position where the capital of the company would have been eroded in previous years. The, the auditors would qualify a statement like that. Our new balance sheet with um with the our new consolidated balance sheet will show a strong company, a company that is no longer in deficit in terms of our capital position, and that therefore that issue will be fixed as soon as you see the consolidated balance sheet. All right, cool. So you're saying that pretty much the auditors are commenting on the previous company, the one that you would have right. acquired. Because, um, right. Yeah. Because um, it's not a new statement. Yeah. It's a statement they put there. It's a statement that if you look at any other company that that has accumulated deficit over years and its capital has been eroded, yeah. you will you will see that. But it's but a benefit. You for a, new a strategic opportunity for you right it is okay okay makes sense all right um so in terms of so the well i have one more question right so in terms of your future plans for growth what does that mean in terms of your need for capital does cap does the company need capital to execute its growth plans for the next 12 months um if if the answer is yes then what what options are you looking at all right so the company doesn't need capital for the next 12 months the 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 new balance sheet will show that the company is capitalized but that's not to say that if we have other acquis acquisitions which will require more money for that we would not in that kind of environment need capital or need to raise money it could be debt it could be equity it could be whatever but um as it stands no we don't need any money to to um operate the business for the next 12 months or even beyond that interesting can't can't wait to see when is the next report due january january i think um well the next the quarter ends december 31st so whenever after okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, because we're in the final quarter. Okay, so um, question 3A. We don't reach question for you. 3A. F Philip is asking, will the reasons that caused the delays previously recur for subsequent acquisition? Um, if it is no, I'd say no. And here's the reason why I'd say no. Was there when you do an acquisition that involves regulation regulators or whatever the case may be you learn right um and therefore if you're doing a, an acquisition of a even a similar company going in the future um it won't you won't you will know exactly what to do in order to um, make it quicker easier and smoother so I don't think that scenario will happen again. And also, if it's an unregulated company, then there's nothing to be concerned about. But I think we have learned in terms of how we go about doing these things, what we need to do in terms of the communication they have back and forth with your regulators, what to do, um, even from a perspective of what is the background work that you do before announcing the acquisition so that it doesn't seem like you're taking too long after announcement. So, you know, going forward, we'll ensure that um, whatever background work we need to do, whatever communications we need to have, whatever um, no objection we need to have is, is done. So um, you won't have this kind of long drawn out process. It, it um something that we're not happy about, but we we'll move forward and we think we'll move forward much in terms of being much better in the future when we're dealing with these kind of things. 
Okay, and I mean, I, I would imagine I've never actually, you know, acquired a company myself, but I imagine that each may be slightly different as well, meaning the steps may be similar, but each may bring, I guess, um, it's, it's different nuances to the table that can yeah. either make things occur faster based on lessons learned or may lend than it just because there is maybe a different layer of complexity there. Right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And, you know, it depends also on... Sometimes it depends on what um, the company that you're acquiring has in front of it and what you need to do. So you might need to say, well, um, we need to complete the audit for this period before you can proceed. Uh, you need to get a, a, a independent valuation. And, you know, I, I mean, I'm kind of telling you some of the steps that we have done and now that we have already completed. But, you know, these are just some of the things that we do. But in terms of how we look at what we are doing and where we are going, we're not, we're not trying to overhype anything. We think that our results, our performance over the next 12 months will speak for itself. And therefore, we think that our investors will see the results you know, in terms of the movement, even in our, our share prices over that period. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, Dina. I do see other questions for you, but I want to keep my word in terms of... How I mean, I'd have one more if it's an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know if it's easy per se, but Matthew Preston is asking, um, if MFS was to do an equity raise, would you be against dilution? And I don't know if you can, I mean, equity raise, I think both come with dilution, right? But I, I don't know if he's asking something specific here. I mean, no, no. Um, I mean, I guess no shareholder, if you believe in your company, wants to be diluted too much this early. Because, you know, if you, if you believe that in a... 24 to 36 months this is what is possible you don't want to get diluted too early because you get you'll be diluted at the uh, i mean but i mean well, i'm not really afraid of of dilution because i am you know i'm confident in in the fact that you know a, a smaller slice of a bigger pie is is better than a big slice of a small pie so a dilution is not really an issue that I sit and, and lose sleep over. Okay, okay. So I guess answering his question, if you're against it, it would be no, pretty much. No, I'm not against uh, Jamaican investor is asking, you said you're fully capitalized, but one of the basis for the qualified opinion is that the auditors don't see it that way. Hence the wording continued financial support is needed. But I guess you would have addressed that in terms of saying the, the balance sheet as it has right now and the next one that we're going to see will show a, a difference from what the auditors would have seen for the basis of their previous assessment. Yes. So, I mean, I've already answered that question in terms of the, the capital of the company. The company, prior to us, the, camp, the company never made a profit. In fact, you know, persons will look at what was there in the last financial year before MFS and, you know, say, oh, but that was a profit. No, it was book profits in terms of the previous shareholder writing off um, some receivables and so on. So in this year, you know, if you look, if you take a deep dive in our financials and so on, you will see that, you know, we made actual revenues from actual um, economic activity in the company. In fact, if you look even deeper, you will realize also that a lot of the the, um, the 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 what is being reflected in terms of a negative light is based on the two um, subsidiaries that the previous owner the previous owners had acquired, which would be Bar Central and Mew. So you know if you if you take a deeper dive in the financials, you realize that most of those losses and so on are attributable to those two um, companies, which 
we basically have indicated in previous announcement that we're looking at ways that you know we can move away from those companies okay and just kick them off the balance sheet for now there has to be a plan as to how you you move beyond that but what we're saying okay. also is that our new consolidated balance sheet will reflect the strength of the company and then um, our investors and analysts and um twitters and facebooks and so on can look at the consolidate the new consolidated balance sheet which we have even discussed um even though it's still not reflected in the listed company and it would it will be we have discussed publishing it beforehand if necessary um we have not made a decision on that yet but we are we are confident and happy that in where in what the new consolidated balance sheet will look like and therefore um investors will see that and have the opportunity to be happy or not happy depending on how they view it but they will get yeah, that opportunity so Anna, so I, I think i understand why jamaican investor is uh, i mean kind of asking this question why cash rain would have asked it before no doubt you'd have certainly heard about um the the suspension of you know i agree right. on on a stock exchange persons are it's the first time i've ever seen so many persons interested in the governance of companies that are listed right usually persons care right. about um the stock price uh maybe profitability maybe uh, maybe dividends etc but persons are actually interested now in the long-term viability of a company which i think is a good thing right but i know no, one of the things we always stressed here is that no, it's, a is it's a really important um aspect of um the company i think you know investors will not have the opportunity all the time to be able to pull the curtain and look behind what's happening in companies so that's why one of the things because and even analysts most of the time they are basically just looking at the raw numbers and making their um their their decisions or their recommendation based on the the raw numbers that are there so um that's one of the reasons why i've always been willing to open up myself to questions or to you know sit in any forum and to have a conversation or agm as you know is it will be in short order and that's another opportunity for investors to come and talk and ask the questions that they need to ask um and you know um the the overall approach that i have is that my role is the ceo i generate you know i work on generating the revenues and so on we have a very strong coo who um work in terms of ensuring that our controls are there you can look at um his credentials in terms of where he has been so we are not like we are not um overnight sensations we're not here to try and make a quick book where um persons who have done this and we continue to ensure that we are working in a way to ensure that whatever we're doing can stand up to scrutiny all right good stuff and and actually as i said uh um i did mention in the group that you're always available uh, and i can definitely attest to that um you are one of the most responsive ceos that we've ever had you know do, do an interview with etc uh, just to remind persons your agm is on the 29th of of november at 10 a.m it says virtually here and instructions will follow so i figure you'll have you know details sent out to to shareholders closer to yeah the we'll update that to, to ensuring that um it's, it's hybrid because uh yeah. we had we had some investors who were some shareholders who were really upset last year so we yes. want to ensure that um we have a, 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 a hybrid format where those persons who really want to come will be able to come um okay. so it will it will be a hybrid um all right 
Sounds good. Thank you so much, Dino. You gave me more than I asked for in terms of time. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Take care. All right, guys. Let me see if there are any questions that I missed. We have a couple of minutes here before we end. Um, so Jamaican investor, hopefully that, that, that answer was um, sufficient for you. I apologize to someone who sent their question and I didn't remember that the question was there. I apologize for that. Um, Matthew, who did you want to ask about Sibony takeover? I don't have any thoughts on it personally. And Andre and Dino are actually no longer on the stream. So sorry. Um, I'll try to maybe cover it another time. Try. No promises. Um, Philip asks, will or does MFS cap invest in JSC stocks? Philip, I'm almost certain that we might have answered this question before. If we haven't answered it on an interview, we probably asked Dino at our monthly meeting. So I will ask him privately. And let you know. Um, sorry, I missed that one. Uh, Devon is saying last year we were told MFS board were looking at options for using capital. Uh, well, Devon, I hope you'd have saw, um, would have gotten your response to that. The Gore says I was expecting to hear dollar and spur tree. So dollar is is it, it's an interesting time for dollar. Um, spur tree is I think a community favorite. For dollar, their next report is due any day now, and Spur Tree uh, may be a time for another check in with them. Bradley's asking what's going on with Sibony. Love to hear what's going on. So that's two persons for Sibony. Um, so maybe it's something that we need to review. Let me know if you think I should do a review of the just the, it's not really going to be a stock review. Um, but let me know if you want me to to do a video on it. Um, Philip is saying, since Sibony had been recently taken over and Jeremy bringing Dino on to give perspective, maybe couldn't reference. Okay. So what you're saying there. Rory is saying Dolphin Cove. Rory, are you surprised that I mentioned Dolphin Cove or you just weren't sure what was said? Matthew is saying, why does Dolphin Cove keep making a loss in Q4? Um, probably something that I should look into. Um, I don't remember if I saw that on when I was doing my research, but um, I'll check the last couple of years and see what happens in Q4. Tavares is saying I'm yet to hear any talks around Sibony. Okay, so we definitely need to do a video on Sibony, I guess. Um, how often does TJH pay dividends once per year? I'd actually want to ask them to change that to twice per year because i don't know if i want to wait an entire year for a dividend um humble boss said this is going to be a great episode i hope it was right new format um we we went through the picks i thought a lot more quickly um because i thought persons would have appreciated to still hear the picks and us not draw out the episode. So hopefully you saw that that's what we're trying to do. Um, and uh, yeah, so went through the picks a lot more quickly so that you get that value. And what we try to close out with is we're, we're, we're going to start trying to integrate maybe a 15 to 20 minute CEO interview or not just CEO. It could be somebody from from the industry, somebody who we think can give a different perspective on a topic that is associated with the stock market, right? So that's the format that we're going for. Um, so yeah. All right, Matthew, I'll, I'll, I'll ask Dina for you. Sorry about that. Hey, Shellyan, <laughs> you're late again. Have to watch the replay. Shellyan, are you, are you subscribed to our mailing list? Because we sent out the link um, at 7. This is not TJ8 CEO. I've tried, I think I'm about to give up. I've tried, sent multiple emails, you know, contacted him via phone as well, have not been able to, to get through to him. So I'm not sure. Um, we'll, we'll try again, but usually if I've tried for a block of time and I don't get through, I give it some space. I don't know. I, I don't want the CEOs to feel like I'm pestering them. Um, so usually what I'll try to do is either get the number for their secretary or assistant to see if they can help me coordinate, right? 
Um, did I create give an update? No, they have not. Um, I did speak to the interim CEO briefly. I'm hoping to have a call with her. Um, if that you know happens, then I'll give the community an update from there. Uh, Roshi saying solid video. Thank you so much. Hopefully, you gave it a like. Um, Ayotan, hopefully, I pronounced that right. And saying invite Kalila. Kalila. <laughs> Hmm, should I invite Kalila? Um, let me know what you'd want Kalila to speak about. Kalila, we actually speak um every now and again. Uh so I mean scheduling for her may be an issue, but I'll ask because I know she's managing things over her on the mission community, so that may take up a lot of time. You guys have no idea how, how much time managing a community can take. Um ah, Shelly, and I got you. I got you. I got you. All right. So, yes, I like the new format, quick and informative, great move. Yes. So the idea is that we're gonna have the, the episode start being an hour long. So you still you're still gonna get the same picks at minimum six, and then a brief interview, and then we'll wrap up. So we're aiming for 60 to 90 minutes. We're on the 90 minute mark. So we're pretty much gonna wrap up here. But I do want to remind everyone about let me share this screen again. So I can mention it quickly. I do want to remind everyone about our upcoming class. The registration is open now. Check our link tree. Well, let me post the link in the chat. So it's investing in, in mutual funds, something that we're doing in partnership with GK Mutual Funds. So we're gonna have our usual class format where we explain you know, what's a mutual fund, uh, pros and cons of investing in mutual funds, and just having persons understand this investment option. And then, of course, since we're partnering with GK, they'll be sharing about their mutual fund, giving you the details of it. And then, of course, you'll have the opportunity, if you're interested, to connect with them. All right, so that class is coming up on November 4th. Just share the registration link, but if you Check on any one of our pages. The link should be there as well. All right, cool. So thanks, everyone, for being here. Really appreciated the support. I think over 300 persons dropped in here tonight, so I really do appreciate that. Um, as usual, we ask you to like the video. It really helps our community out. If you stayed here the whole time, you definitely want to like the video. I think I see 80 persons here still and right now we are at only 50 likes right so the 30 persons who have not yet liked the video i'm gonna ask you to just do that um shelly is saying lg i recall you said you would look and j give bonds and cds okay 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 j government bonds um you wanted me to cover them shelly meaning just give an overview similar to how i would do a stock review um okay I, I can i can do that definitely um all right noted cool all right everyone thank you so much for watching really do appreciate you being a part of this community we value your time we value your support uh, also note that our conference is coming out in december the registration is going to open before the 15th of this month so i hope to see you there thank you so much as usual i look forward to seeing you in the very next video Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn, Grow, Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com 